In this video, you're going to learn how to build a mega flow inside Cartflows step by step. Now, first, a little definition. What the heck is a mega flow? Well, let's just say that the thank you page in your funnel is not necessarily the end of your funnel. It could be just the beginning of it. Now, let me show you one example on paper here of what and why this is and why we're gonna to try to do this in cart flows, and then we'll go ahead and do it step by step, okay? So in this example, what we're going to do is build out a tripwire funnel, <clears throat> which is a pretty basic funnel. It's going to go from having uh, a freebie of a lead magnet to get their email address, and then it's gonna offer them a one-time offer and a thank you page. No big deal, right? You might be thinking this is not a mega funnel, what's going on here, but let me explain why this is a little bit different than what you might be thinking. When most people think of a lead magnet, they're thinking of just an opt-in form where they put their email address in and it goes directly to your email autoresponder like MailChimp or MailerLite or Drip or any of those to be able to send newsletters to them. But they don't really think of it as purchasing a product. But in this scenario, let's just say for our example, and the reason why I had to figure this out was I wanted to offer a you know premium looking you know, course that wasn't just an email course, but I wanted to actually put it on LearnDash, put it on my website, and uh, give them some really good value in that freebie. Well, you can't really just have somebody uh, opt in and uh, get given access to a course. Then you have to go to an email that have to go and confirm and log in and, and create an account and all this stuff. I wanna be able to make the experience as good as possible. I also wanna have good traceability by having it in that flow where I can see the analytics and I can see my conversion rates over time. So what we're going to do here is instead of just doing an email opt-in, we're actually going to offer a free product for this, um, for the first step. But then we're gonna offer a second product as a one-time offer. And I'll show you how this works and how you can do it with a free product. It's pretty fancy. And also, if you haven't seen this before, I do have a video very recently where I went through eight different types of uh, funnels that you can implement using cart flows. And I'm starting to build out a full-blown companion course to cart flows that will include uh, templates and all sorts of goodies and help to build these out step by step. So be sure to check out the link in the description below to learn more about that and the upcoming course. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in. What we're going to do is we're gonna create a free product and then we'll have a paid product and we'll show you how you can string things together very, very fancy in cart flows. So let's go ahead and get into our dashboard here. And I call this mega flow just for fun. So let's just go ahead and I've already created some products because we don't need to waste our time doing that here together. So we'll go ahead and make a new flow. And for example purposes, let's go ahead and use a, a pre-built example. We'll use this inline checkout because it, I like it because it doesn't require multiple steps to get their initial uh, free product. You don't really need to go through a bunch of steps for a, a free offer and make it look much more like an opt-in form. So here we've imported the form here. Let's just call this Megaflow. I kind of like that name. And let's go ahead and configure this guy. We'll take it out of test mode and we'll hit update. And then we'll go ahead and edit the first step here. Now let's scroll on down and we'll add our free product here. And we'll hit update. Let's also go into the checkout fields and make this look as much like a opt-in form as possible by removing as much information as we don't need as possible. So we'll remove all of this data here that we don't care about. We'll also, uh, you know, not to be impersonal, but we don't even need their name. We really need their email address to be able to, you know, serve them their product. Okay, so we're good here. Now let's also go and just check out the checkout design. I'll show you something we're going to do in the customization side. We're going to make this a one column instead of a two column checkout design and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and edit this with Elementor. Okay, so let's just change this around a little bit here. Let's go ahead. What I wanna do is make this look a bit more like an opt-in form than like a full-blown uh, sales page. So I'm just gonna remove this button here and I'm gonna take my checkout here this is my checkout section. You can see is our cart flows checkout area. I'm just gonna drag this text button or this text box up here and I'll remove this picture and I'll say, get started today. Get started today, you're going to love this freebie. And let's just delete the stuff down here that we don't need so much. 
right, good deal. And let's add some additional padding to the bottom of this area. Oh, sorry, to the bottom of the section. Okay, now let's just update this and take a look. Okay, so now this looks similar-ish to an opt-in form. Um, you know, obviously, we could do some additional uh, uh, customization here, but this will work for me. So you see, we're asking for their email address, no other information, and just get started today. So it's a simpler form than a full-blown sales letter, and that will work. So I'll make a silly email address. And well, you know what? So this is step one, right? But this is not a me mega funnel right now. If we were to finish this off, we would just go right into our thank you page. So let me show you what we can do to kind of extend the sales process. Okay, so that step is good for now. Let's go back to the flow. So in this thank you page, let's just take a look at how it looks by default. It's the thank you heading. Uh, and then your order details here. So here is what's kind of sneaky. What you can actually do, if uh, if you so please, is let's just extend this flow a little bit longer. And let's call this, instead of calling it thank you page, um, let's make a change here. And let's call this one time offer. We're gonna do a few adjustments here along the way, but let's just go with it for now. So I just want to set the skeleton of the flow up here. So now we have a checkout page and a one-time offer page, and then we'll have a second checkout page. Now stay with me here. It's going to make sense in a minute. And let's go with, uh, gosh, maybe a, just a simple checkout page here. Okay. Now let's configure the checkout page first, and then we'll come back to the one-time offer page. So what we're doing here is selecting a product. Now this is going to be a paid product. So uh, I think I have it called as an upsell, but we'll just use it as a regular product here and we'll enable it. You can also apply a coupon code here to make it a, a good value, a good deal for them. And you can even add order bumps and anything else that you'd like. So let's just take a look at the uh, up here so far. Okay, so here's a checkout page. Alrighty, so let's update that. We, we're not gonna do a whole lot of customization on the checkout page, we don't need to. What we really wanna do is customize our thank you page from the first part of the funnel. So here we'll go into edit this one-time offer page. And let me grab this URL here. And we'll edit this checkout page, I'm sorry, this thank you page here. So because they just got a freebie, I'm not even going to show them their order details on this page. We, we really don't need to so much. But what we will do is say, awesome. But before you go, check out this one time offer. Okay, so and now let's create one little section in here that's going to make it look like a one time offer. Ooh, let me. Let me just redo, the, oh goodness gracious. Check out this offer. And then let's get rid of this guy here and let's add a section. Let's just change this around. Check out this great premium course. Not gonna do social buttons. What we're gonna do is actually you can go into as long of a sales page as you want, but here we'll just do the, kind of the bare minimum here, and we'll just say, put this in the center, make it extra large. Our default colors are that lovely green, and then we'll have that go to the checkout page. And we'll say, and you know, obviously you can make this text as much as you want to, uh, get it for 85% off, today only, or whatever, whatever you'd like. So now we've actually changed our thank you page into a one-time offer sales page. And let's go out in here to our dashboard and kind of see what the flow is looking like and see if we've missed any steps yet. So as we look here, so now they see our opt-in form and we could call this opt-in. Then we have a one-time offer and then we're going to have the checkout, which is actual purchase process for that one-time offer. We also need kind of finally a thank you page in case they do make the purchase, right? 
So we'll add a thank you page in here. This one looks like it's on brand with kind of how we've started to go along the way. And now we have a thank you too. Let's just take a look at this. We might not need to do any customization here. So we have our order details here. This is just a, a copy of that thank you page from earlier. So let's go ahead and I, I know this looks a little bit strange. You're like, what exactly is happening here? Let's walk you through the process and you'll see kind of how this is a really fancy way of doing it. I, I really think this is going to be a useful thing. Um, and let's talk real quick about the benefits of why doing it this way. So you have the ability to offer a free product and with a single click add a bump to that offer. But the challenge right now is that that, um, it, it, for one, it makes the the reader, the visitor, think about something else. I mean, it, it you know could decrease their conversions because they have to decide if they want the bump offer or not, and then they can get distracted and go to YouTube. Um, that's one problem. The second problem is if they take the freebie but not the paid offer, uh, you're kind of you just go to a thank you page and you lose the ability to really capture their email address and then offer them a second benefit. So let's go here and show you how this could work instead. So they have their freebie offer, and you can say get started today. You know, for free products, I would love to be able to hide this, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, let's see. We'll make our new account here. And we'll place our order. Okay, so we just got our freebie, and that could be delivered any way that you want your freebie to be delivered through WooCommerce. So then we'll say thank you, but okay, check out this offer now. Now you've just given them a another opportunity to buy from you. So they're like, oh my gosh, 85% off. Obviously, you'd want to build this out and make this a real sales page. But if you convert them here, now you can take them to a second uh, checkout page, which, um, you know, this is actually interesting. When I was testing it before on a different window, it pre it pre-filled in all that information. You, oh, you know why? It, it pre-filled this in, but we didn't remove all the um, the fields from this checkout form. We should have done that. Uh, I really want to show you that. So let's go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and make a quick change here to the second checkout page. And in the similar vein, we don't need information that we don't, or we don't want information that we don't need. So let's remove the stuff that we don't need. Obviously, if you're shipping products to people, you will need some more of this information, but I'm not. All right, so email address is all we need here. And you'll see that should be pre-configured and pre-filled in when we are rocking and rolling. So let's go back real quick here. Let's go back to our incognito window. Let's just close that out. Let's go back to our flow and start it one more time here. Okay, so here's your freebie opt-in. You could even pull this thing all the way up into the top there if you'd like, but there, there's a bit more information than you really need. So. All right, let's make a really long email address here. So we're going to get the freebie. Thank you. But you want to check out this offer. And you could even throw the checkout form down here as well. Uh, I, I don't think that's a really good idea. So I'm, we're going to go with the button here to see if they want to take the offer. And now my information is pre-configured, pre-filled in. The only difference here is obviously now you have the ability to make a purchase. So now you can put the Stripe information in. And we could save payments, but we'll say no. And we'll place our order. So now we should be able to see this order here. You can see it's showing, it's not showing the freebie that you got because that was a free order and that was on a previous transaction. This is on a new transaction here, but you can see that they went through, they got the upsell, you got their information, and then you could have the calls to action here. What's really cool about this is the, it's not mutually exclusive, the bump, the free plus bump offer or this version. You can actually um, kind of create a different web. If they take the bump offer, show them a different upsell. If they don't take the bump offer on the free uh, product, then you can show them a different one-time offer here. So you've got a lot of flexibility with how you can work with this. You can even, after doing, let's say they are successful through their one-time offer checkout, you can offer them upsells and downsells from there. So that is a pretty advanced way of using cart flows, but it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of ways to really maximize uh, your average order value, as well as kind of simplify. Like if you were to go this route, you can kind of go all in on cart flows because your lead magnet, your opt-in forms could be set up as uh, products within WooCommerce. You know, additionally, if you didn't want to make the first one a product, you could 
just to make a landing page and have an email opt-in form on the landing page and then direct them then to the one-time offer page as well using cart below. So a ton of different things you can do here to play with it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you found this valuable. I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. If you want to learn more about cart flows and how to use sales funnels in your online business and kind of some geeky little ways of making it do what you want it to do, head on over to IncomeMesh.com. Check out the free course where I have eight different, uh, let me show you this real quick here. So the little blue book of sales funnels, it goes through eight different sales funnels, how you can implement them. And these buttons here actually allow you to import them into your own Funnelytics account with a single click. So you can then go through customize, add URLs to them, do a lot of cool things. And it's, I think it's pretty valuable. So uh, I'll sign off at this point. If you want to learn more, head over to incomesh.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.